hello there welcome to this tutorial before we begin kindly subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any new videos like the videos and share it with your friends today we are going to solve cambridge IDCSC mathematics paper 2 extended variant 2 to october november 2019 the first question the lowest temperature recorded is negative 57 degrees centigrade and the highest temperature recorded is 63.8 degrees more than this. So what is the highest temperature? We have the lowest negative 57.0 degrees and the highest is 63.8 degrees more. So we add uh, 63.8 to negative 57 and the answer is 6.8 degrees. Question number two. We have been given numbers and we have to calculate. Put this in the calculator correctly and you will get the answer 7.6045. You can round it to one decimal 7.60 or two decimals 7.60. Next, expand. When we are expanding variables, so you have a bracket a to the power of 3. We add the powers. If you cannot see any power, it means there is a 1. So when you are multiplying a with a to the power of 3, the answer you will get is a to the power of 4 because we add the powers. And then a times plus 3 is plus 3a. Question number 4, we have been given a Venn diagram and we have to shade the region A intersection B complement. Learn to understand that complement means not. So A intersection B is this inside part, which is overlapping. It is a part of A and part of B. So A intersection B complement or A intersection B not is everything except that part. So it is this part. Question number five. The mass correct to the nearest kilogram of each of 11 parcels is shown below. And we have to find the mode. Mode is the most repeated number. So which is the most repeated number here? We can see that it is 23. You have two 23s and everything else is one. Next, give a reason why the mean will be an unsuitable egg average to use because uh, to find the mean you need to have your data in a certain limit here you see everything is between uh, 16 to 32 except for 96 you have an extreme value it is very much away from your other data so mean is not an appropriate average to use because of one extreme value Question number six, the table shows how children in Evans class travel to school. So we have been given the mode of travel and the number of children. Evan wants to draw a pie chart to show this information. Find the sector angle for children who walk to school. So we have to find the sector angle for the, this uh, sector. We need to use the formula angle of a sector is equal to Frequency of the sector over total frequency multiplied by 360. Frequency of the sector who, of the children who walk is 12. And the total frequency, we are going to add all these up. That will give us 32. So that 32 will go in the denominator and multiply by 360. And we will get 135 degrees. Question number seven. Rashid changes 30,000 rupees to dollars when the exchange rate is one dollar is equal to 68.14 rupees. How many dollars does he receive? Whenever you have a question like this, write like that dollar and rupees. Write the currency one is equal to 68.14. And what has been given to you? 30,000 rupees. So put it in the rupees column. And what do you want to find? The number of dollars. Write x. Now cross multiply. So 
so 1 multiplied by 30,000 is equal to 68.14 multiplied by x. As this is a multiply, when we move to the other side, it will be a divide. 68.14. So 30,000 divided by 68.14. We will get 440.27 dollars. Question number 8 is a bearing question. We have been given the bearing of P from B is 102. So this is 102. Find the bearing of B from P. If the acute or obtuse angle is given to us and we want to find the other bearing, that means that's the outside part. Please remember that you just have to add 180 and you will get the answer. So the answer is 282. Question number 9, solve the inequality. You have a number in the denominator. If you have a number in the denominator, to cancel that number, multiply the full equation by 2. So x over 2 multiplied by 2, the 2 will get cancelled, you will get x. Negative 13 multiplied by 2 will give you negative 26. 12 multiplied by 2, 24. And 3x multiplied by 2 is 6x. Bring all the x on one side and the number on one side. This is a positive 6x. When I bring here, it will be a negative 6x. And the negative 6x, uh, 26, when we move to the other side, will be positive 26. Negative 5x is more than 50. Whenever you have a negative uh, number before x, so when you are solving for inequality, this is a multiply. So when you bring that to the other side, it will be a divide. Your inequality sign will change. The more than will become less than. So 50 divided by negative 5, x is less than negative 10. Question number 10. Write the recurring decimal 0 0.6, 7 as a fraction. So 7 is recurring. Show all your working and give your answers in its simplest form. How do we write this? What does it mean? It means 0 0.6777 continuous without stopping. For a question like this, first write let x equal 0 0.67. Then multiply by 10. Both the sides by 10. So you will have 10x is equal to 6.7. And the numbers will go on. The number after the decimal must be same. You have in the first place 6 and in the second 7. It means that we have to multiply once more. So now multiply the same first term that we made by 100. x multiplied by 100 will give us 100x. And... 0 0.67 multiplied by 100 will give us 67.7. .7. Now that you can see the number after our decimals are same. Then we subtract from the big one, the small. So 10x we'll write here. And we are going to subtract it. 100 minus 10 will give us 90x. And 67.7 recurring minus 6.7 recurring will give us 61 point uh, sorry 61 and this will get cancelled to find x we have 90 x is equal to 61 therefore x is equal to 61 over 90 question number 11 without using a calculator work out this fraction and write your answer as a mixed number in its simplest form. It's a three mark question. This is one of the most repeated questions and very easy to solve. So the first thing is we'll convert this mixed fraction into a improper fraction. For doing that, we have to multiply the divisor by the quotient. So eight multiplied by three plus five. That will give us 29 over eight. 
the same you are going to do for the other fraction 1 multiplied by 3 plus 2 and you will get negative 5 over 3 after this step you need to have a common denominator so multiply uh, the first term by 3 and the second term by 8 so you have a common denominator now 8 multiplied by 3 24 and in the numerator multiply 29 by 3 you will get 87 and 5 multiplied by 8 is 14 87 minus 40 is 47 over 24 you can use the calculator put this in the calculator and press the shift SD button I'll show you which one and you will get the answer as 1 over 23 over 24 in the calculator write 47 over 24 and after doing so press the shift button this button and then press this SD and this is the answer you will get also for uh, converting into mixed fractions you have uh, this number here 358 3, 5, 3, uh, 5 over 8 you can use this button press shift this button okay and put in in the calculator 358 and this is the answer you will get 29 over 8 you can use the calculator you just have to show that you are doing it manually question number 12 a regular polygon has an interior angle of 176 degrees find the number of sides of this polygon for this we need to know two rules these are the two rules interior angle plus exterior angle is equal to 180 we have an interior angle so first thing we'll do is find the exterior angle exterior angle will equal to 180 minus 176 that is 4 degrees then we'll use the other part of the rule number of sides equals 360 degrees divided by the exterior angle so to find the number of sides we are going to divide it by 4 because that's our interior angles and you will get 90 so the total number of sides are 90 question number 13 two mathematically similar containers have heights of 30 centimeter and 75 centimeter the larger container has a capacity of 5.5 liters calculate the capacity of the smaller container so this is the larger container and this is the smaller container 75 centimeter and 30 centimeter they have heights so the first thing we need to know that how did we get 35 we need to 75 multiply by a scale factor we'll name it as k gives us 30 therefore k is equal to 30 divided by 75 this is for height capacity means volume therefore the larger and the small the larger capacity is 5.5 multiply by our scale factor which is k 30 over 75 will give us the capacity of the small container the only thing you need to remember capacity like I said is volume so the power will be cubic put this in the calculator and you will get the answer if it was an area we will square it okay and the answer is 0 0.352 liters but we want the answer in milliliters 1 liter is equal to 1000 milliliters so therefore to change the liter into milliliter we will times it by 1000 and you will get 352 milliliters question number 14 show that the line 4y is equal to 5x minus 10 is perpendicular to the line 5y plus 4x is equal to 3 35 the first thing we will do is 
write both the lines in the format y is equal to mx plus c. We'll find the gradient of each line. m is the gradient. So 4y is equal to 5x minus 10. y is equal to 5 over 4 x minus 10 over 4. The next line is 5y plus 4x is equal to 35. So 5y is equal to negative 4x plus 35. Divide both the sides by 5. When two lines are parallel, the gradients are same. So if two lines are parallel, the m will equal the m. But if two lines are perpendicular, then the gradient will be flipped over. And so if you have the gradient 5 over 4, the perpendicular gradient will be 4 over 5 and the sign will change negative 4 over 5 so that is the case here this is 5 over 4 and this is negative 4 over 5 therefore the two lines are perpendicular or there is another rule that we use m multiplied by the perpendicular gradient is equal to negative 1 our gradient for the first line is 5 over 4. Multiply by negative 4 over 5 should give us negative 1. If it gives us negative 1, it means it is perpendicular. And it gives us negative 1, therefore it is perpendicular. 15. SB buys X magazines at $2.45 each and Y cards at $3.15 each. Write down an expression in terms of X and Y. For the total cost in dollars of the magazines and the cards. So 2.45 times x is magazines and cards are 3.15 times y. So this is an expression we have. Part B of the question. Esme spends $60.55 in total. And she buys eight magazines. X is our eight magazines. How many cards does she buy? So let's just write the equation. 2.45 times 8 plus 3.15y is equal to 60.55. So 3.15y is equal to 60.55 minus 2.45 times 8. You can put in the calculator now or later. This will give you 40.95. We have 3.15y. So 3.15 when we bring it to the other side it will be a divide. 40.95 divided by 3.15 will give you 13. So the total number of cards she buys is 13. And this brings us to the end of this tutorial. Kindly watch part two for question number 16 onwards.